What's up guys? Welcome back to Boost Brothers Garage. Today, pretty exciting, we are at the world headquarters of PE, uh, Performance Electronics. We are partnering up with them for, well, all of our builds uh, for ECUs and swap harnesses moving forward, but especially the 07K swap, which a lot of you guys have been following along with. So, we're going to do a brief little shop tour and then we're going to do a deep dive into their technology. Stay tuned. Alan doesn't want to be on camera, so uh, say hi, hi Alan. <laughs> hey guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so here we have Tim and David from PE. These are going to be our tour guides for the day. So the first thing we're going to look at today is their lab. And you're going to show us what you've got uh, calibration for O2 sensor monitoring. Yep. Uh, you've got a couple ECU set up for us to look at. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Well, let's uh, just walk around and take a look as we go. So what exactly are we working with here? Laboratory uh, mix of gases that basically outputs a set lambda. Okay. And we have two different gases for two different lambda values, and all we're doing is confirming that uh, our controllers are uh, accurately uh, measuring that lambda value. Okay. So this is an industry standard? Correct. This is, okay. this is a, a way to make sure that the value that you're reading is correct. So what is the general purpose of your controller? Is that just how you're taking the data from the O2 sensor and getting it into your ECU? Yeah, so the, the main thing with the controller is it has to drive the sensor and that the current needs to be controlled through them. Okay. So there's, there's a lot of different stuff that goes on to one, driving these sensors, but also driving the heater circuit. There's, there's really two things that are being controlled in here. Um, and then from that, you can figure out what your, uh, your AFRs are going to be. All right, so on this station, we have a couple ECUs set up, as well as a example of what the swap harness is going to look like. This is actually David's personal harness for his 240, mm -hmm. SR240? Yeah, SR20. SR20, okay. The overall construction of the harness itself is really well done. It's not full mil spec, but that's really not necessary unless you're in... Formula One, really? I mean, this is, what do you call a club sport spec? I'd call this a club sport harness. Right, so uh, it's super well done. It's gonna make the engine compartment of the 944 look so much cleaner and it's gonna be an easy plug and play swap. There's also two ECU sitting there, the PE3 8400, which is what we're gonna be basing our kit off of, as well as the 8405. And the 8405 is marketed specifically towards the LS guys. And the only real difference is the amount of coil drivers and, and how they're set up. Uh, if you guys really want all that information, comment below and I can chime in or David or Tim can chime in and we'll get you those answers. Real brief history of how, how this all started. I actually met these guys at the PRI show, Performance Racing Industry, uh, in December. And I started talking to them because we were originally just looking for uh, obviously an EC to use with the 07K swap, but also with our Cayman build. And I looked at their name tag and it said Cincinnati, which is where we're from. I'm like, what the hell? And it turns out they're just right down the street and uh, they're, they're kind of a, a well-kept secret. And we're trying to get that secret out to people because they've got some amazing technology and products and they do come in at a significantly better price point than a lot of others in the industry. So one of the things we like to do in the lab is, is set up various different tests to uh, really refine our code. And one of the tests we're looking at here is self-learning closed loop boost control. And what we, we're really trying to, to do for uh, our customers is, you know, say they turbo a car and they don't, they don't have access to the dyno or they're not really tuning gurus. Uh, they can go out and start, uh, start driving their car and the, the ECU itself will figure out how to reach the target boost level uh, in the most efficient manner possible so you don't get boost spikes, but you also get the best response you can out of your turbo. What we were looking at before was their lab area and more of their R&D section. Behind me, this is the actual assembly area. We're here kind of after hours, which is why it's uh, so quiet, <laughs> which is great for filming. But yeah, we'll walk around here and show you some ECUs and their different states as they're being assembled. And we're even gonna get to hook up to one uh, and watch it being tested. So right now we're actually testing one of their ECUs. And this ECU is specifically for a UAV, unmanned aerial vehicle. Um, PE does stuff with government contracts. They do stuff with 
uh, aftermarket motorsports suppliers. They they do a lot of electrical controllers and sensors for other companies and private label them. So you may already be using their products and you don't even realize it. Uh, but anyway, what we have here, we have the ECU hooked up to what is basically a mock engine. We have spark plugs, we have coils, we have a reluctor wheel, we have everything. So you can go through and on the computer, you can adjust your RPM, you can take a look at uh, sensor temps, anything, and they can fully test the ECU based off of this setup right here. It's really cool. As we move past the production area, we actually come back to their performance testing area. So we have a dyno right here. This is where we're actually going to dyno Alan's car and my car to set up all the base maps for our 07K swaps. They've got this really sweet Subaru Time Attack car here. This thing is just mental, full race car. It's awesome. One of the other things that PE did that I wasn't aware of, they are actually the sole distributor of ECUs to SCCA Enterprises. And this engine behind me on the test stand is actually the standard engine for the Spec Racer Ford Gen 3, SRF 3. It's a real mouthful. But anyway, they're gonna fire this thing up for us and there's a couple really cool things on this. Number one, they're gonna show us their dash display and this dash display is what I'm gonna be running on my car once I swap it. Uh, you can also run your original gauge cluster. We'll have that harness set up for both. And also we're gonna see their wideband O2 controller that has an app and you can actually pull it up on your phone via Bluetooth and you can see all your wideband stuff right there. Just to warn you, the starter motor on this thing, mm -hmm. it's, it sounds like a sword, sword fight. Okay. One of the things they're developing on this engine is their drive-by wire controller. SCCA Enterprises is going to be mandating drive-by wire electronic throttle body moving forward. So they're going to be coming up with a controller, which means that that's going to be coming to their standard product offerings as well, which is awesome. This is their race display. Uh, they're working on an OBD2 version as well, but right now this is the setup for their ECUs. You can go in and you can change the layout. So you can have one line of data all the way up to eight. So you click one and you just want to see your RPM, you can do that. And then they have alarms that you can set up. So it would flash to let you know that you're low on oil pressure or whatever it is. So it's really cool. You can make it as simple or as detailed as you really want it. For instance, eight potential data points, although this engine's only giving six right now. If we want to change or add data points, we can just click right here. And let's see, what do we want to do? How about coolant temp? Click that, click home, and boom, it's right there. The different colors are different alarms. Right now, the alarms aren't really set up for what we're doing but it gives you an idea of the possibilities with their display. So for their Wideband O2 controller, like I said, there's an app. You can go in, you just click the uh, app and it automatically connects via Bluetooth to the controller. And then you can see where your Lambda's at. It's also got a history chart down here so you can follow along. It's a really cool setup. And the nice thing about the controller itself is you only have to hook up two wires, a power and a ground and then you can Bluetooth everything to your phone, or there's a third wire that you can run and you can run closed loop to the ECU itself or data logging or whatever you wanna do. This room is the engine dyno. On the dyno right now is an LS truck engine. Uh, this is also where they've been helping to develop that drive-by wire controller. It was really nice to walk through and see everything that you guys do. Um, for our 07K specific application, um, I think a lot of the guys that do this swap are going to have the car on the track. So what are some of the feature sets of the PE3 8400 uh, specifically for motorsports guys? So anti-lag, traction control, what, what all can this little box do? Yeah, so this box has a lot of different motorsport features uh, including traction control, uh, launch control, it also has uh, nitrous control and uh, boost control with some uh, fairly advanced strategies and all of those. Okay. Um, it, it'll also do a gear cut control uh, for What's a wide open shift? Yeah, flat so shift. it'll do flat shifting with uh, with independent gear 
cut times. Okay. So you can change your cut time per gear. Uh, it also will do a gear actuation control, where it'll control not only your uh, your gear cut time, but your uh, pal shift actuators for okay. air shifters. So say, and this is something that Alan and I have been discussing. Alan is just afraid of the camera. He's over there hiding in the corner. <laughs> um, but one of the things that Alan and I have been discussing is the transaxle in the 944. It leaves a lot to be desired, uh, especially the NA transaxle. So ultimately, we'd like to find a better solution, and that may be an Audi transaxle or an Audi transmission that, that we modify to work as a transaxle. Uh, the O1E is one that we've specifically talked about. And with that, there are aftermarket companies that do dog ring gear sets, can turn it into a sequential transmission, et cetera. So if someday we do end up finding a way to put a different transmission in and we can make that a sequential transmission, then we'd have all the feature sets we need to control that however we want it, right? Exactly. Which I can't even really fathom. I'm going to be honest with you. It, it's too much for my brain right now. As far as boost controls concerned, can that be by speed, by gear? How does how does that work? So currently, uh, it's boost by speed. Okay. Uh, there's we do open loop and closed loop boost control. Um, we're currently updating our boost control to include a self learning feature. It'll do boost by TPS as well. So okay. there's a table in there that allows you to to pull out boost based on you know, where you're at in the throttle. So that helps the car be a little more manageable on a uh, road course. Okay. Let's talk about what you were doing on the road course with your 240. You were using not only boost control, but you were using nitrous to help spool the turbo as well. And you were controlling all that through this. Yeah. So uh, the nice thing about our ECU is uh, it has a lot of generic, uh, very powerful pulse with modulated tables. Okay. So you can basically, you know, do a four dimensional control from different inputs, make a table, and uh, basically set targets to do whatever you want. So I, I set one of those up to, to do what I call spray to spool, where uh, I was using 235 shots of nitrous, just basically getting my turbo up to snuff and uh, making a four cylinder feel like a V8. That's awesome. So I guess my, uh, my toggle switch for high and low boost settings isn't going to be an issue. These are standard off the shelf items now for any people that are, are looking for a nice aftermarket ECU option for whatever project they have. And that's rotaries, four cylinders, five cylinders, eight cylinders, 12 cylinders, apparently UAVs, all sorts of stuff. So uh, these are available, however, for our specific use for the 07K kit. We're hoping to have Alan's car in here on the dyno in June. That's when the swap harness is gonna be completed. That's when all the base maps are gonna be done as well, if all the stars align. So we're really excited to see it all play out. Uh, we just are waiting on that intake manifold and oil pan. So that's that guys, that's a, a brief rundown of PE, what they do, how we're gonna utilize them. You're gonna be seeing more and more of them on our channel in the future. We're gonna be using their ECU for the Cayman build, etc. So I wanna thank David and Tim for their time. Hope you guys enjoyed it.